Okay, hey everyone, so this is a review for the 8 Bido Pro 2 controller, specifically the one with the the new one with the hollow effect control sticks in it. Um, See, so yeah, I've never tried one of these Pro con 8 Bido Pro controllers. I mean, I have, I do have other 8 Bido controllers, but not like this specific type. So yeah, if you like these videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, comment, all that stuff. Let me know if you like these controllers. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is the Amazon box that came in. Okay, and I'm actually pausing the video right there because uh, I just wanted to mention this. So you can see on the box, on the bottom there, it says, Fast Delivery is my love language, and then the Amazon Prime signal. <laughs> so yeah, so this, um, that actually is not true. I, or either that, or they just ignore their love language because, um, yeah, this uh, controller actually arrived like two days late, <laughs> and I know that's not 8 bit of a fault. At least I don't think it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe they shipped it out. I don't, know, I don't know anyway, I don't know how the Amazon shipping works, but anyway, long story short, is that it arrived late, and then since it arrived late, I actually wasn't able to pick it up for a few days, so it was actually just like seen outside um, in the cold and in the hot, since March is uh, kind of weird where it can be very warm and then also very cold and like, <laughs> yeah, snowy and stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, long story short, is it was out in the weather, I don't think it actually snowed on it, but... Um, yeah, I was out in the weather for a few days, and so yeah, that will be another interesting test to see if that affects the performance. And actually, since this is me from the future pausing the video, I can just tell you right now, it didn't it didn't um, affect the performance, and the battery life actually also uh, has so far been really good. So anyway, basically, long story short, is that that was kind of an unfortunate uh, test that I did, and I didn't mean to, but it still passed the test, if that makes sense. So. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's it seems like it's a pretty rugged controller for extreme or semi-extreme <laughs> conditions. Um, I guess it didn't even really get that much sun, and it was also inside the box, so I don't know, maybe it wasn't that extreme. But anyway, still would recommend not leaving your controller outside. But yeah, just uh, rest assured that this is at least a pretty sturdy controller. So anyway, let's uh, unpause the video. Uh, directly from 8 Direct, I think is what it said on the label. Um, yeah, um, packaging is a little underwhelming. There's definitely a lot of empty space in here. It's just this uh, little uh, <laughs> card or a little um, yeah piece of paper. Uh, but yeah, here's the controller though. Now the, the actual controller, like the box, and I was actually surprised when I picked up the Amazon box too. It's actually got quite a bit of heft to it. I was uh, yeah very very surprised. So obviously you'd get one of these. Uh, mostly probably for the Nintendo Switch as an alternative to the official Pro Controller, which I have here. So yeah, we'll be comparing how the two feel. Um, yeah, see which one feels better. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and open this up. So yeah, you can see it says Pro 2, Pro 2 Bluetooth Gamepad. So um, yeah, so like I said, I don't have the, the first Pro uh, 8 controller, but from what I understand, this one has the, uh, the levers on the back where you can assign, assign different... Uh, buttons to them so then you can like if you're using both thumbs on the stick then you know you can have like for example a, a Zelda you could have like the B button be assigned to the back here then you can run while also moving the camera uh, for example um, yeah let's go ahead and take a look at the box the box here on the back before we uh, take it apart or uh, unpack it so yeah so I did get the G classic look so this is like it kind of looks like a Game Boy <laughs> Thought that was a pretty cool look. I already have the 8 bit controller, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller, so um, but yeah, the Game Boy colors of the buttons and then the D pad looks like a Game Boy D pad as well, so um, yeah, and it looks like it's available, it works on Switch, Windows, Android, Apple, Steam, and Raspberry Pi, and a bit on other stuff too. Like, a bit of work on the Nintendo 64 with that uh, blue retro adapter, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it definitely has some heft in it, so I don't know. I don't think the controller would be that heavy, so it must be something else inside this box, I, I assume. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and take this apart. This is a little tricky to do with one hand. Oh, it looks like there's some tape here. Well, I'll just pause the video while I get this uh, taken apart. Oh, wow, and actually, I think I can do this one-handed. Yeah, I, I don't have my camera stand with me right now, so I'm just holding it with my hand. But yeah, actually, this is cool. So I've never seen this before, but this this uh, tape that's covering this, it actually has a little tab. So it's actually very easy to get off. Usually you have to, like, cut these and or, like, rip them off, and then you, like, rip the box, too. Um, yeah, not this one. This one has these uh, these little tabs. 
But you can see here, see how it just kind of goes up here? So that's actually very easy to get off with just one hand. Look at that, that is the nicest tab, uh, whatever these plastic things are that I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, that's uh, very cool stuff. So anyway, so now I think this should just slide completely out like this. Yep. Yeah, so actually this isn't too bad doing with just one hand. <laughs> nice. Cool. So there's the box. So yeah, so far it feels pretty high quality. Oh, and look at that. There's the actual controller. Wow. Oh, that is definitely nice looking, I must say. Wow. Oh, and the A, B, and, um, A, B, A, B and X, Y buttons. It has this little film on it. Let's see if I can turn on the flash so you can see it a little better. Yeah, you can kind of see this little plastic film here. So I'm just going to take that off. Wow. Yeah, this uh, definitely screams high quality. Yeah, I don't think the... Well, yeah, the Switch Pro controller didn't come in this kind of... This nice of a box. <laughs> yeah, it just came in a box with a plastic bag around it, from what I remember. Wow, look at that. It's even like... Yeah. Wow. And yeah, and actually the, control, the controller is hefty. Holy cow, that is a heavy controller. Wow, I was not expecting that. And it's quite big, too. It fits in the hands quite well. Yeah. Wow. Okay, nice. Looks like it probably just had a battery. Let's see. Usually the Zapito controls, you push the start button. Oh, there actually is a little bit of battery in there, it looks like. Yeah, you can see the light flashing there. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, we'll charge it anyway. Oh, and I can tell right now these uh, back um, R2 um, or ZL would have, is what would be on the Switch, but R2 on the PS4. Um, these are analog triggers, so yeah, you can, you can feel that. And here's the, let's see, the column P1 and P2 for these um, paddles on the back. Oh, and then there's a there's a switch back here, too, so then you can switch between all the different modes. Let's turn off the flash so you can see this a little better. So yeah, it says uh, SADX. So yeah, so switch, Android, direct, probably, and then X input is what, what my bet would be. So yeah, switch, Android, and then direct would be for Mac, probably. Or maybe iPhone, I'm not sure. Um, and then X is for, like, Xbox or Windows. So yeah, cool. But yeah, it feels really good. Let's see what the, the other side feels like. Yeah. D-pad feels good. Yeah, it definitely feels like one of those old uh, classic Game Boy D-pads. So that's cool. I like how they have the arrows on each, on all the sides too. And then you got the select and start. I really love how it Bido, um orients their buttons as well to match like the Nintendo layout. And so you have like B on the bottom, A on the right, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, really cool. And then, yeah, and then of course you got your function buttons here. Uh, I don't know what this button is. Maybe that's the... No, that's the sync button up there. It has USB-C charging. That's nice. Yeah, the shoulder buttons feel good, too. Yeah. The thing with the analog triggers is that the Switch doesn't... The Switch Pro controller doesn't uh, have analog <laughs> triggers, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that could be useful for other systems. Yeah, these buttons feel like the Game Boy buttons as well. I'll have to do another video where I compare this to my Game Boy. Um, yeah, how it looks. But anyway... That's pretty cool though, yeah. I'll have to figure out what this uh, center button is, but um, let's see what else comes in the box, because yeah, that, that controller is hefty. Um, however, I think there is more stuff in this box underneath. So let's just see what else is under here. Okay, so I guess not too much. Looks like we got some instructions. Nice. See, so yeah, I don't have to necessarily open these up and look at it right now, especially because these are harder to get apart with one hand. And then, oh, nice. Cool. And the USB-C charging cable. Nice. So this is actually cool because um, usually these 8 bit controllers that come with the very, or just like, or not just controllers, but like just adapters in general, they come with a very uh, small, like short <laughs> USB cable, which is fine. I mean, if you're just connecting to a computer, but yeah, this is nice for... Uh, connecting to like your actual system or whatever. Let's see if I can get this off because I'm pretty sure this is actually a bit of um, branded. Yep, there it is, the Bitto brand. So yeah, this is a a bit of cord, which is cool. Yeah, that also just says high quality when the yeah when companies brand their own stuff. So yeah, this yeah so far, you know, functionality side it seems pretty high quality, and uh, and yeah, just feeling these Hall Effect sticks. Yeah, they feel pretty similar to just like a regular uh, Pro Controller stick. And even like the size is pretty similar. 
So yeah, and the, the travel distance, the tension, everything feels pretty similar, I must say. Yeah, so yeah, but but I mean, I mean, apparently, if you don't know, the, the advantage of these Hall Effect sticks is that they don't have any parts inside of them that are rubbing against each other, and so um, that supposedly will make it so they're drift-free forever. <laughs> Um, although I haven't really had problems with drift on this controller either, and this is one of the original ones from when the Switch first came out back in 2017, haven't had any problems with it. Um, however, you know, obviously Joy-Con, Joy-Cons have had a lot of problems with that, so. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, charge this controller up, and then we'll give it a try. Okay, and here I have it plugged into the back of this computer. So yeah, it just has an orange light here when it's charging. So yeah, it's also very similar to the Switch Pro Controller by Nintendo. Um, so yeah, this computer doesn't have hardly any amps, amp output, so it'll probably take a while to charge. So I'll just leave it charging overnight, and hopefully it's done by tomorrow. Okay, and there's the controller all charged. So yeah, that uh, orange light just turns off when it's charged. And uh, yeah, it only took maybe like two hours, even with that really low amperage uh, PC USB port, PC USB port I was using. Um, however, I thought before we plug it into the uh, or hook it up to the switch to try out. I thought I'd just make sure that it's up to date. So I've got the um, 8 bit updater tool here. So I'm just going to, you can see it's prompting to um, plug this in. So that's what I'll do. And then supposedly this will just show up. See, it's showing that it's charging again. All right. Okay, so it says it's uh, Pro 3 version uh, 3.3, 3.03 connected. Oh, and look at that, there is a, a new firmware. And actually, the 3.03 .03 isn't even uh, <laughs> listed here, it looks like. So I wonder if that was just like a bad firmware they just wanted to kind of forget about because it does let you go back and do older firmwares if you want to. Um, let's see what's in this new firmware. So it says, added the auto mode for turbo function. Oh yeah, that's right, there's turbo function on this controller too. Then please refer to official website for latest user manual. Oh, okay, so we'll have to look at the new user manual as well. And then it says, fix issue of USB wired, wired pair, pairing failing in S mode. Okay, optimize accuracy of joysticks. Great. Well, this is uh, my favorite update that they've done here for sure, because, yeah, accuracy is very important, of course. All right. Well, yeah, let's definitely update this. So let's just click on update here. Okay. Prepare to update. I click on this. Oh, nope, there we go. Yeah, this update process is a lot more streamlined than the way the old um, update process for 8 video stuff used to be. You used to have to download the individual patch files for the controllers and then the updater tool. And I think you can actually still use those. Because, um, yeah, they sent me a like a beta firmware one time for a GameCube G-Bros adapter. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, and, yeah, and I used that, their old update tool to apply that. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is done, so I'll just click on Update Complete. All right, cool. So now we should be good. And then actually, before we completely disconnect it, um, I'm actually going to pull up the 8 bit um, oh, what do you call it, the uh, um, Ultimate Software, because, yeah, I'd like to see what this does too. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Okay, cool. So it looks like you can set this up for either Switch, Windows, or Android. So yeah, um, Mac is not supported. I saw that on the website as well. So yeah, we'll set up for Switch since that's what we'll be doing. And yeah, look, it says it knows we're using the Pro 2. I did click on the Pro 2 on the website, so I wonder if this image changes the paint on what control you pick. But yeah, it looks like it is showing up correctly here. So yeah, it looks like this is pretty straightforward. You can remap the buttons if you want to. Um, I don't think I really need to remap any buttons, um, but I guess we could try to, oh no, these are the triggers. Okay, cool. So you can, you can say how active you want them to be interesting. So it looks like there's a little bit of dead zone here, basically. So you have to push them in a little bit, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, but since it is the switch, I want it to be completely on pretty soon. Um, cause yeah, cause the original, uh, pro controller just has digital buttons digital triggers of course but yeah it looks good oh now there's a vibration mode hmm you know this is something I was wondering about I wonder because like the other um, 
a bit of a controller that I have that looks like a Super Nintendo controller. The vibration is okay, but it's uh, definitely not as good. It's not HD rumble, but it's not strong like like a GameCube vibration or like the Nintendo 64. Um, but yeah, it looks like both of these are set to five, so max. Ooh. Okay, so as I'm as I'm doing this, I can feel it. And yeah, this is the good kind of vibration. It's the like traditional kind of vibration, but it's it's definitely stronger than the other a bit of controller that I have. So that's actually really nice. Um, yeah, I'm liking the way this vibration feels. Feels. Okay, that's cool. So when you make a change, then it says sync to controller. Um, I'm just going to leave them on full blast because I really like vibration. But I guess if you want to, you could have set to zero to turn off vibration, or just like one, two, three. Four, five. Yeah, it does get a little bit stronger. Yeah, with each one. And then here's some macros. <laughs> so I guess you could like um, record like beating a, bra a boss on a game or something. <laughs> I guess I don't know. And then yeah, I guess you can. I guess we could try to do that as well. I don't know. I'm not terribly <laughs> uh, worried about that. I wanted to know how to do these paddles on the back though, so I'm going to pause the video see if I can figure this out. Okay, I think I figured it out. So you can see it says P1, P2 for I guess paddle 1 and paddle 2. And yeah, that's what these are uh, named down here as well. Um, yeah, right there. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but trust me, it does say P1 there. Oh, and also I like how this has a removable uh, battery pack. Yeah, so you can upgrade it or uh, replace it or whatever. That's very nice. You know, take off all the screws on the back. Um, but yeah, it looks like right now it's set to end, so I guess that's just neutral, so it doesn't do anything. So let's see if we can change this to something. Let's see here. Button. Oh, here we go. So N. Okay. Um, let's, so let's try doing like, for example, let's do... What is this p1 so let's do this to b and let's see if we can then like run in breath of the wild without and move the camera at the same time that'll be something interesting to test um and then for p2 i don't know what what can we said this one too um so yeah that's the thing i don't really think i have a need for this necessarily also null is just we'll just actually let's just leave it on end just to make sure it doesn't do anything <laughs> Realistically, I'll probably just go back and just change this off of B because I don't want to accidentally press this uh, when I'm playing, like, especially Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, don't want to do a B button trick, which means that you push, uh, you do a B attack uh, when you don't need to and then get yourself out. <laughs> um, but anyway, cool. Well, yeah, I think this is probably good for now. So we'll just say sync to controller. Press the load. Oh, so that's what that button is. It's uh, for profile. So I guess you can have three different profiles there. Nice. So press to load profile. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now you can see. So now there's different, there's three different lights here. So I guess that's how you choose whatever profile you want it to save to. So see, I can do, I guess it's just one. Probably because there isn't anything saved on here. So yeah, we'll just save it to that one first. And then, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens now if we push OK. OK. All right, cool. So now that should be profile one. OK, I paused the video there because we had a crying baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, I figured out. So yeah, so you can see here up here, you can change the different profiles. And then, yeah, you just go through on this button here. And then you can select the different profiles. And so yeah, we should be able to do that on the switch. And then I also create a macro here. This will be like for Smash Brothers. And I assign these paddles to different stuff too, just to test that out. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy to do a macro. Just click on this macros. Oh, you can't see this macros button up here. And then yeah, and then you just like click like the A. So like this would be like for the A button. So when I push A, then I don't know, we can do like, let's push like B. Um, and then like B and then left stick down. Yeah, and then let's do like, uh, or no, no, hold on. So then it would be like up and then B. So then I push up B. Yeah, I don't know, these are just funny. So yeah, so we push, hey, that's what will happen. Then I push enter and yeah, and then I put this for L macro as well. So yeah, when we push L then that should show up. 
Um, so yeah, so anyway, um, oh, and then of course I don't want to forget to sync to controller. And then yeah, and then it says press to load profile, and then you can see we're on number three. So it's three lights lit up, and then you can see here we can load profile one, two, three, and whatever. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we got the sticks too, so yeah, we can change the left stick sensitivity. Let's just do something crazy and just like put it clear down <laughs> to like, what is that, like 10% or something? Um, same thing with the right stick. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, yeah, this will be interesting. So yeah, we'll just sync that to the controller as well for number three. And then while we're making this really weird profile, let's go ahead and change this all the way to be... Let's see if this makes it so it's like too trigger happy or like it's like too easy to push. So yeah, let's see what that does. All right. Okay, cool. So I think that's good for now. So now let's go ahead and unplug the controller and sync it to the switch. Okay, so here, oh wow, some my controller <laughs> just synced. It must be my other pro controller. Oh no, it's this one. What, is this really synced? Oh wow, it is. Oh wow, that is interesting. So it was already searching. I guess that makes sense as it was in switch mode, but I, <laughs> I literally just unplugged it from the computer and then I turn on my switch and then this must, this light must've been going on and off. Um, yeah, trying to sync and then you had, then it just synced automatically. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't expect to do that, but I mean, there's also the sync button up here, so we should be able to also just push this and then supposedly it'll start syncing or it might be like those other controllers. We have to push start first and then push this button. Okay. So yeah, so see it's connected first and actually connects pretty fast. Okay, now it's synced again. All right. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. So yeah, that is like the other controller I have. Okay, cool. So anyway, so I thought first we'd try out this uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, so yeah, no. Okay, there we go. It's because I was using the Joy-Cons before. So yeah, this is a little tricky because since I don't have my, uh, my, my camera stand, it's a little tricky to play this. Let me see if I can set up the camera a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that stays. I'm using the, the Safe Bido controller box and then also the Amazon box in the switch case. All right. But yeah, this controller feels uh, really comfortable using right now. Yeah. So again, this is just the default profile. You can see I don't have any lights um, turned on. Oh, whoops. Something just hit me. <laughs> Not paying attention. Let's turn up the volume too a little bit so I can actually hear what's going on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you can see this is, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, this feels really good. Yeah, I feel like the, oh yeah, the motion sensors, the motion sensing is working. Oh, is that a wolf? Let's see if we can hit that guy. Nice. <laughs> Frozen at a time. Cool. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, and then I can see, so, yeah, so when I just push this, this uh, down a little bit, then it registers, which I think is okay. Or it's this, yeah, there is a little bit of dead zone there. Whereas now, if we switch to our weird profile, number three, two, three. Whoops, <laughs> I forgot. Oh, wow, okay. So remember how we uh, set the dead zone on those sticks to so like 10%? Um, yeah, we got a little bit of drift there when we first set it, but now, yeah, there's a look at that. There's a little bit of drift with this controller. Interesting. Hmm. Well, yeah, I don't know about that. And also, I'm not really a fan of those uh, um, these triggers down here because it's very easy to hit when you don't want to. Maybe it's just something I have to get used to. But yeah, and also, okay, there we go. Yeah, now it's working. But yeah, there is a little bit of drift though. You can see it's going off by itself when I have that. And obviously, you know. Whoops, you'd want to have it set to, um, you know, not this sensitive usually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is something to keep in mind, I guess. And now I've messed up my camera, so I'm going to have to... Oh, there we go, I fixed it. Um, okay, yeah, but then when I move it a little bit, then it kind of snaps back into place. Um, oh, but actually, look at that. Now the right stick is drifting. See how it's moving the camera slightly? So yeah, I guess you do need a little bit of... Or not to have it be that sensitive, I guess. Because now, I mean, just to show this. See, I hit that trigger again. The paddle button, I mean. So yeah, now, see when I set back to zero. Or to, like, off. Then it's it's uh, not doing that anymore. 
but yeah, I mean, realistically, I would always just keep it in, you know, this default profile because I don't really like to mess with the stick set studio. However, I am interested if we put in this third profile and then if we go in here, oh wow. Oh no, this is something interesting too. See, I'm holding down the D-pad and usually you can go by, you can go through these really quickly. I wonder if that has to do with this stick drift, so I'm going to put it back in the default profile. Let's see. Yep, it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's when we have the oversensitivity and then it's still uh, sensing those sticks. So yeah, because you can see on these other profiles where I didn't mess around with the sticks, it's, um, yeah, it's fine. So yeah, but anyway, let's go ahead and try to like calibrate the sticks in here. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot. Oh, brother. I forgot that I set, um, <laughs> I set my uh, A button to be a uh, macro and so I was doing weird stuff. Okay, I'm going to do the regular profile first when we go in here. All right, let's see here. Let's see, where is the calibrate control sticks? We'll intend to let you update 8 o controllers. That'd be um, interesting. <laughs> OK. All right. OK, so now I'm going to put, put in the third profile, and then I'm going to push down the, the right stick. Oh, it says tilt the stick. Oh, that's right, they changed it. I forgot. OK, so yeah, you can see there it's it was going off a little bit. Yeah, it's like really sensitive right now. You can see jumping all over the place. All right, so now we're going to push X to recalibrate the stick. Okay, now I'm going to have to... Okay. All right. Release. I wonder if this will fix it. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I don't think it really helped. Well, no, it's still kind of off center a little bit. Um, yeah, it's still all over the place. <laughs> well, I'll definitely want to go back to default settings um, before, because yeah, because obviously this would just keep it for every profile on this controller. Okay, so I'm just letting him sit here, and yeah, it's not really moving everywhere now. So I don't know, maybe that fixed the drift actually. So yeah, just that calibrations. So yeah, doing turn up the sensitivity to crazy amounts on this controller. Um, oh nope, it's still drifting. Yeah, so yeah. So I guess long story short, with 8BitO um, software, uh, you can even make Cal effect control sticks uh, drift a little bit. <laughs> but so, but anyway, but I mean the real test will be when you don't when you just have regular control sensitivity on here, and even if you put it on like halfway, like twice as sensitive. That would probably still not drift. Um, I think it's just when we went overkill is where it really drift. Um, in fact, I think I'll try that. I'll, I'll go in and change profile two to um, to be half sensitivity, and we'll see if it drifts. And I'll also reset the the control stick settings. Um, but yeah, but for number one though, this feels really good, even with the the settings that we did in the switch system settings. So, um, so yeah, I mean, again, the real test will be to see if this drifts over time. Or not, because supposedly it won't, since it's a hall effect, supposedly. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, again, I haven't really had problems with the Switch Pro controller either. Drifting, personally, I've only had problems with Joy Cons. Many, jo many of my Joy Cons have drifted, but never the Pro controllers. So, um, yeah. And I usually use Pro controllers anyway. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I use a lot of different. Actually, mostly nowadays I use like the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controllers. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go in and put the profile two to be 50% more sensitive instead of like really crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, like profile three is so anyway, I'm gonna pause the video real quick. Okay, I think I found another problem with this controller. I still really like it, but there are just a few little quirks, which generally I think is the case with third party controllers, unfortunately. Um, however, I think it, for whatever reason, it's just frozen up. So um, yeah, it's like, I have my switch actually turned off right now, you can see. Uh, however, it still says it's connected to something. And when I try to now connect it to my computer, you can see nothing really is happening here. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try to, I don't, I don't know, maybe that's why they made the battery removable so you can take it out and force it to turn off because I mean, I'm even like holding down the start button here and it's just not turning off. Again, don't get me wrong, I still really like this controller and I'm going to use it a lot, but yeah, it's definitely there. I'm glad that they're probably going to be keep re releasing firmware for this because, uh, yeah, there's uh, still some bugs for it for sure. <laughs> 
Um, so anyway, I am, I'm going to try to take out this battery and see if I can get this to turn off so we can actually get to connect to the computer. Oh yeah, there's all sorts of crazy stuff happening here. It says it's charging even when there's it's not plugged in. So yeah, anyway. Okay, here's the battery pack. So yeah, and actually it says uh, 8 bit on it. You can see that there. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so supposedly we should just be able to pop this battery out. Looks like looks like you could actually just put double A's in here. That's actually kind of nice. So this is kind of tricky to do with one hand. Oh, actually it was pretty easy. Oh yeah, see? Oh yeah, look at that. You could just put, um, yeah, double A's in there it looks like. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Okay, so now this controller should be off. Yep, okay, now we have it off. Alright, so I guess that's the that's the nu nuclear way to turn it off. You can see on the other controller, and maybe it's just because this controller froze, um, but on the other controller, the other 8 bit controller I have, it looks like a Super Nintendo controller without these handles. Um, that one you just hold down start for like 10 seconds and it turns off, and that might be the case on this one too. Like I said, it's just that it might have been frozen. Um, but anyway, so now the controller is off. And so now, and now who knows, maybe it was 8 bit software as well. So I'm actually going to close this and then I'm going to reopen it down here. Give it a second to reopen here. Oh, not the firmware updater. All right, here we go, Ultimate Software. Okay, all right, so now let's try this again. Turn off the flash. Okay. Okay, so it says it's connected. Is it going to let us go into the Ultimate Software this time, or is it going to freeze again? Oh no, we have the spinning wheel of death on the Mac. Oh brother. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's going to probably freeze again on us. See, it says it's charging. Alright, yeah, this doesn't look promising. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so there's something funky going on here. So we actually might not be able to test out the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yep, now it's frozen again. So yeah, I guess connected to the computer for whatever reason is freezing. Um, yeah, I'll try resetting my computer since that sometimes fixes stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll try that real quick, see if I can get this to work. Okay, there we go. I finally got it to connect again. So basically what I had to do was plug it in with the battery in, and then while it was plugged in, I unplugged the battery, and then it connected. And then I, and so yeah, so that worked. And then I unplugged this cable, and then I plugged the battery back in, and then I plugged the controller back in. And yeah, now it's connecting once again. So again, unplug the battery while it's plugged in, I guess, um, to get to reconnect <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, yeah, anyway, so now we should be able to go in here and I'm going to click on profile two. Yeah, hopefully they can figure out that bug. Okay, so now I'm going to take this down. Oh, you can actually do this side too. Oh, wow, that's weird. So you can, oh, that increases the dead zone, I guess. Because what we did before, that increases, that basically says how far you have to push so you get to 100%. Huh, interesting. Okay, well anyway, we'll just put this down to 50, around 50. Okay, so now, let's see, okay, so that's the active area, I see, okay. And, okay, and then this is the inactive area, okay, cool. Alright, so that means that we, when we push it to about halfway, then we should be at 100%. Um, so yes, yeah, so that basically that means it's about uh, twice as sensitive. And then, yeah, I guess we could change this too, but we'll just keep it simple. Um, all right, so now I'm going to sync this to profile two. Okay. All right, so now, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it's like in a weird state because I have to like close the program first. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to close the program, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to, let's try it on the switch again. Okay, here we go. So first off, let's see if it still has it synced to the switch, or if it tried to sync to my Mac. Nope, it's still synced to the switch. Nice. Cool. Alright, so first off, let's go into here, and let's change the control stick settings back to uh, the way they were before. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one down, the one that we calibrated before. And I'm going to do back to default settings. Okay. All right, and then let's just we'll just double check the other one. I I didn't change the right stick, but we'll just double check to be sure. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so now I'm going to pick profile 2. You can see here that's the one we did 50%. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's drifting. So, yeah. Oops, there goes my camera. See, so yeah, that seems like, uh, whoops, oh man, I don't like those paddles. <laughs> Every time I pick up the controller, I, uh, I push it. Oh, please don't fall, phone. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not drifting at 50%, so yeah, just as long as you don't increase the sensitivity too much, I think this controller is probably drift-free. Drift <laughs> All right. Okay, well, anyway, so now let's... Oh, brother. I'm just going to hold the camera. <laughs> okay, so now let's uh, do Smash Brothers and uh, test that real quick. Okay, there we go. That's cool. Since I've been learning Japanese, I actually now understand some of these words when they're singing in Japanese. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, little by little it gets easier to understand. Okay. All right, let's just get into a match here real quick. Let's do an offline match. Yeah, and then before I do my final thoughts, I'll uh, I'll play just on my own to really see if I notice anything else out. Yeah, let's just see what it feels like. I like to do Smash Bros. just because I play this game a lot. <laughs> I think after this I'll also test Mario Kart. Yeah, so far so so too good. Pretty good. Yeah, it feels uh, definitely responsive enough. And this is just on the pro default profile as well, so regular sensitivity. Huh. These I'm not used to these uh, analog sticks, but I guess it's kind of like a GameCube controller, so I guess it's probably okay. It's something I can get used to, but... If, it's, if it doesn't need to be analog, I don't know. I almost kind of prefer it not to be, but oh well, whatever. Oh wow, man, this guy's good. Okay, so now I'm going to try, let's see how he does against Profile 3 where we have our macros. So let's push L. Nice. <laughs> well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> I guess that's one way to do a L button trick. Um, L button and, and uh, let's see, so we had, yeah, so it's like jump and then, actually that's kind of cool. So you jump and then you do the cannon. That's actually kind of cool. So just like have it go up a little bit. Just like a short hop. I could get used to that. And then let's see what our A button macro does. Ah, stop attacking me, please. Oh, brother. Now, except now the. Oh, brother. Oh, this guy's relentless. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it goes down. So basically it pushes down and then he does the cannon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go into training mode so we can see it better. Okay, not so tough now, huh, Kazuya? Alright. Oh, that's right. I have to change the profile back to three. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I think I also did, like, up B, but the problem is that King K. Rool's cannon is so slow that it actually probably is pushing up B, but obviously if you push up B during that... I don't know, then it doesn't like do anything, or like, I don't know. But there actually were, if you saw on that other screen, there are, um, you can like change the timing of the button, so I could set this up to be, you know, something cool. Uh, but yeah, basically the A button now is doing the same thing as B though, <laughs> since, yeah. And then L is like a short hop B, yeah, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, now the sensitivity is, uh, yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> Yeah, sensitivity is way too high. Yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to try that just to see what it was like. But, um, but yeah, as far as just like... I'm kind of curious... Take that, Kazuya. Um, I'm kind of curious because if you saw my other video I did where the 8 bit um, N64 controller, it will, it will actually do... Uh, um, uh, it will like do misreads of inputs. So yeah, um, but yeah, it was, it was like on that 8 bit N64 controller, which also has a Hall Effect stick, um, it would like misread the down smash, for example, is down tilt, if you saw that other video I did. Um, but yeah, I'm not really seeing that right now. It seems like everything is, sensitivity is feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm not really having problems with it right now, so, oh, well. So at that time it was a, maybe a little bit too sensitive where it read a, 
down tilt is a down smash. But that could have been my fault as well, but usually I don't mess up on that. Uh, sensitivity might need to be worked on a little bit. Okay. Well, anyway, like I said, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually gonna, just going to pause the video. And then I'm just going to play with this by, um, by myself. Just to see how easy it is to play like online and stuff. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, and then actually before I do my own testing by myself, I'm actually going to see if this will wake up the switch. I've never seen an 8-bit controller wake up the switch before. And I doubt this one will, but you never know. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. So basically this is unfortunate because that means you always have to have another controller with you or you have to get up and turn on the switch manually if you have it docked. Um, especially right now, like I'm laying on my bed right now because I actually have a broken leg I got from a motorcycle accident. And so, yeah, the least amount of movement I can do is uh, a lot less painful for me. <laughs> so yeah, this is unfortunate with this controller that it doesn't turn on the switch automatically. That means I either have to have my switch right next to me or I have to have another controller with me. So. Anyway, that is uh, one thing I wish they would incorporate with the controllers, because definitely there are other third-party controllers that have figured this out, so I'm sure they could as well. But um, anyway, that is definitely a disappointment for this controller. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my own testing now. Okay, so I have been playing with this controller for a while, and yeah, I thought I'd uh, connect the, 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 you know, the original Pro Controller as well, just to kind of compare the six sensitivity. And I wanted to go in and update the <laughs> the Switch Pro controller, um, just the controller, just to make sure both controllers are up to date since I already updated the Bido controller. And uh, yeah, strangely enough, though, um, the Switch is currently trying to update this uh, 8 Bido controller, so <laughs> I don't know uh, what that's all about. I guess it's reading it as a first party controller or something, but anyway, I'm just going to pause the video and let it try to update here. I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, I've left it here for like over five minutes. You can see that's like right next to it too, so there should be no interference here. <laughs> and yeah, this 8-bit controller is just not having it. It's not accepting this uh, unauthorized firmware update that Nintendo's trying to send it. Yeah, it only accepts firmware for its own, from its own uh, ultimate, or no, not the ultimate software, the firmware updater. And even then it sometimes froze, but yeah, <laughs> it's not accepting this stuff. Anyway, I'm going to try to turn this off. Let's see. Let's see if I can... Okay, yeah, so I guess I can't turn it off by just pushing the sync button. Uh, that's how you do it on the official Nintendo controllers, but if I hold this down for a few seconds, it should turn off, unless it froze. Oh, I hope it didn't freeze. If it froze, then we can always do our trick. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So now, let's see if we can actually get this official controller to update. This one should... Oh yeah, this is much better. So I guess that's one thing to keep in mind. And I don't know, I haven't ever tried updating a third-party controller with the Switch before like this, so... Um, yeah, I don't know if it does it with other controllers, but that was much quicker. But yeah, don't try to update your 8 bit controller <laughs> uh, with the Switch. Yeah, probably not a good idea. But at least it didn't freeze, like, trying to update it with the 8 bit official firmware. <laughs> I'm sure that's something that lie around eventually, but um, anyway, while I'm uh, finishing this video and giving my final thoughts, I thought I would just uh, go in and uh, play a few more games. So first off, I want to do Mario 64, so let me pull that up. Oh, and actually before that I do that, I wanted to test the sensitivity of this control stick compared to the official Pro Controller. So again, this is just the regular settings. I don't have any of those weird custom profiles on right now. All right, so let's just see. Yes, yeah, so it seems like it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's holding pretty steady. Oh, that jumped right over there for some reason. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I pushed too much on the control stick, but yeah, it seems pretty steady. Sometimes these control sticks, if they're not the highest quality, they'll kind of jump around a little bit in here. But yeah, this one actually looks pretty good. Um, so I guess we'll just test this one as well. It should be the same, but yeah, so it seems like, oh, now there it kind of jumped. I don't know. Sometimes it seems like it jumps a little bit, but, um, maybe that's something they can fix in a firmware. I'm not sure, but it seems like for the most part it doesn't. And who knows, maybe it's just like a calibration thing. 
um, where it's like when you first start using it, it jumps a little bit, but yeah, it seems like it's not really jumping anymore, so that's good, as long as it's mostly consistent. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see if we get a jump again on this one. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe that's just a fluke thing. I mean, in the last update, they did say they updated the control stick sensitivity, so maybe that's still something they can iron out. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, it seems like for the most part, though, it seems to be working okay. Um, so now I'm going to put this 8 controller aside, and we're going to do it with the Pro controller. Let's just see if it feels pretty, it feels similar. Yeah, it feels pretty similar, yeah. You can see this one also doesn't jump around and stuff. See, I mean, that's the... Yeah, that's a big thing because yeah, sometimes, like I say, sometimes you get controllers and like even if you hold it like here and you're not moving the stick at all, it'll like this dot will just kind of move a little bit. Um, in fact, I've even seen like the the uh, G Bros. I think it was the 8-bit uh, G Bros adapter that does that. Um, from what I remember, I'll have to double check on that. But yeah, anyway, but yeah. But long story short, yeah, it seems like this controller doesn't. Um, so yeah. So anyway, let's go into. Mario 64 here, and I'll do my uh, final thoughts. Okay, and so the reason why I wanted to go into Mario 64 specifically is because I, um, hold on, let me set my camera. Okay, it's a little better. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I also tried, as I was testing this, oh yeah, the rumble's definitely working. Um, yeah, as I was testing this on my own, I was testing on my phone as well. I usually don't play games on my phone, but I did try uh, just for fun to play um, Mario 64 on my phone through an emulator. And yeah, I couldn't get the controller to connect in Switch mode or in the A mode, which I thought would mean Android, but actually maybe it means Apple uh, now come to think of it. But yeah, it didn't work in that mode. And then, but however, I did get it to work in the X mode. Uh, which is like, I guess, X input or maybe X, well, I don't know. Reddit is an Xbox controlling the emulator, so maybe it's like Xbox mode, I'm not entirely sure. Um, however, the buttons were mapped all strangely, and I'm sure I could remap the buttons, but then when I tried in D mode or direct mode, um, that one actually was mapped correctly in the emulator I was using. Um, yeah, and then, so anyway, so basically D and X were working. Uh, however, there was a lot of lag, especially in X mode. <laughs> and I don't know if that was just my phone. I have an LG phone. Um, yeah, but, and again, I haven't done a lot of, like, customization stuff. I really don't use my phone for playing games, like, hardly at all. I only kind of, I really only installed that just for kind of fun and <laughs> to see if it would work. Um, but yeah, it was uh, very laggy, though. And yeah, but, so anyway, so that's why I wanted to pull up Mario 64 on here to just kind of compare, and yeah, I can already tell you that it's uh, a lot less laggy than it was on my phone, so yeah. I mean, this is emulation too, but I guess it just kind of depends on what your emulator is, what device you're on, I don't know. Maybe my phone doesn't have the, the quickest response time either, but whatever it is, this is definitely a lot better than, what, than the experience I was having on my phone. But even here, it's like there is, actually, you know what, it's actually still... Yeah, it seems like it's a little bit better, but like there's still a little bit of lags. Like, you can see I'm pushing the button, and then it's like when my finger goes up, that's when Mario goes up. When really he should start jumping when I push A. And maybe it's just because I'm used to playing on a CRT on original hardware, usually, like almost 100% of the time with this game, uh, except when I'm testing stuff. And so maybe that's why I'm super sensitive to lag. Um, because, yeah, obviously, even on the Switch, there's going to be a lot more lag. Well, Maybe not a lot, but there is more lag than if you're playing on a CRT and like, you know, original 1064 and all that stuff. And then plus the Bluetooth is a little more laggy as well. But anyway, but I'd say overall, though, it feels acceptable, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so that's the first thing I wanted to mention. Then also, um, I guess the biggest thing that I had to get used to with this controller was like when I was playing Smash Brothers online, it actually was first off. It was a really cool experience. This controller is very nice. It's very comfortable to hold. Um, yeah, there's like a little bit of like grip on the bottom side of these handles. And uh, yeah, I was very impressed with it. The biggest thing to get used to was just this control stick being down here. 
So like, for example, when I was King Carol rule, I was, I was doing a bunch of, uh, I meant to do like B and over, uh, to do the crown, but then I kept on pushing B and up. <laughs> and so, which left me super vulnerable. Um, and yeah, I got punished for that quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, just because like the angle was a little different than what I'm used to where the control stick is usually up here. Um, however, I was able to adjust to it and then I wasn't messing up as much as before, but yeah. Um, yeah, but overall, I mean, that's obviously something that I'm just used to usually the control screen up here for most Nintendo controllers. But yeah, that's something I was able to adjust to again. So it's not really a design fault of the controller. Um, it's just something I had to get used to. And um, yeah, rumble's really nice in it too. Um, yeah, and then, so yeah, so anyway, so those are my thoughts on that. And then the last thing I wanted to show you real quick, which is actually something I have not tested yet is I wanted to do uh, Mario Kart 64 just to see um, how the control stick handles because like for example the Brawler 64 Nintendo Switch Online controller if you saw my video down that uh, it's a cool looking controller but man the control stick sensitivity is so bad on it um, yeah you can check out my old video down on that but yeah, it's, it's specifically, sorry, the one, so the Brawler 64 that's made, that's like a wired one for the Nintendo 64, like with the Nintendo 64 plug on it, that one is actually pretty good. Um, but the one that's made for like Nintendo Switch Online, that one was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, check out my little video if you're interested about that. But anyway, let's see how, it's like you can see when I push this control stick. Oh yeah, yeah, this feels nice and smooth, yeah. Yeah, so like the Brawler 64 controller, the Nintendo Switch Online one. I have to specify so you don't think that it's all Brawler 64 controllers. I haven't tested all of them, but just the two I've tested. One was good and one was bad, but the one, the Nintendo Switch Online one, the NSO one, um, was not good. <laughs> At least not for sensitivity purposes. There was a huge dead zone too, but yeah. This one doesn't feel like it has that. Yeah, this one feels really good. So basically... With some cheaper controllers, it almost feels like on Mario Kart you're playing with a D-pad. And so it's like, when you push, you know, like left a little bit, instead of turning a little bit, he'll like turn very drastically. Kind of like that. Like you're pushing like full all the way, all the time. So yeah, that's not a <laughs> good thing. But yeah, long story short, this one does feel, this controller feels like it has excellent um, accuracy as far as like stepping and stuff. Um, and actually, let me pull up Mario 64 again real quick, uh, just to see how the tiptoeing works. That's another test I like to do. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, yep. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, there's a... Yeah, there's actually not really too much of a dead zone. Yeah, it's just a slight bit, but I, it's really not very much at all. Um, yeah, really not, not very... Not very much at all, and I think it is probably good to have a little bit of a dead zone. Um, but yeah, it's almost nothing. So, but like for example, let me pull out the the official NSO controller real quick. Okay, yeah, here's the official NSO controller. So yeah, you can see on this controller, you can see there's like zero dead zone. Well, actually, actually, there is a little bit, I guess, still. Yeah, there is a little bit on this controller. So yeah, it actually feels pretty similar to the. Um, 8 bit controller, so yeah. Anyway, basically, long story short is that the sensitivity on that other controller does feel really good. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I don't know. This this um, N64 controller, the official one that you can get from Nintendo for the NSO, this is, like, probably my favorite controller of all time at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's very well built. And, yeah, I might start liking the 8 bit one too. This is kind of a rant, but I might start liking the 8 bit one too that I... If they can fix those uh, bugs that I showed in the other video, then yeah, I might start liking that one a lot too, because that one also feels great. Um, but yeah, this one just is awesome as well. So um, yeah, anyway, let me switch over to the other controller now. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so final thoughts. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a controller that I'm going to be um, very happy to use quite a bit. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm playing with one hand again, because uh, yeah, I only have... I don't have my stand right now, so, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is a very good controller. Um, yeah, it feels great to hold, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm obviously not holding it right right now, but, 
uh, even this is um, okay, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, holding it normal is uh, very, very great. Yeah, really like this controller. So um, yeah, my biggest complaints, let's see, I have a few complaints, but I'd say probably my biggest complaint is that it doesn't wake up the switch. Um, so yeah, again, I have a, yeah, have a <laughs> broken leg, so gain up and turn on the switch is a task for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if I could just turn it on with this controller, that'd be a lot easier. However, I guess I probably what I'll do is I'll just unplug this uh, um, right Joy-Con, and then I can use that to turn on the switch. But again, that's just something that, you know, ideally you wouldn't have to do. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, that's my biggest complaint. And then another thing is, uh, yeah, it was a little tricky to figure out how to update. Um, or no, it, yeah, no, 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 sorry, it wasn't the update, it was the 8 um Ultimate Software. Yeah, that's where it was freezing. Yeah, I was, I forgot about that. Yeah, it was the Ultimate Software. Sorry, I said that wrong before. Oh, that cheater, he went up there. Huh. I can't run up there. But anyway, um, yeah. What was I saying? I don't even know what I was saying before. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so the freezing stuff. Um, yeah, that was an annoyance, but also it wasn't like the end of the world since we were able to eventually uh, unplug the um, controller or the battery. Sorry, I'm like focused on beating him. He cheated, so I cheated too. Uh, yeah, I think it's fair if we both... He took a shortcut, I took a shortcut. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, but besides that, it's actually a really good controller. Uh, performs very well. And also what I really like about 8 is that they update their controllers uh, pretty consistently. Um, especially their more popular ones. I've kind of had to fight with them a little bit to update like the G-Bros adapter uh, And actually I need to test that to see if it's um, <laughs> If the update is uh, good enough now uh, Yeah, it's one on my list. They sent me a an update for it. But anyway, I need to test that thoroughly, but um, Yeah, anyway, I think that'll do it for now. So yeah, I will leave a link for this controller in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so it doesn't cost you any more, but it helps grow the channel if you do end up using it. And yeah, there's this, the one with that comes with the hollow effect is at the time I'm recording this video, it comes in three different uh, controller colors. Um, so yeah, there's this one that's like a, yeah, like the Game Boy, original Game Boy look. And then there's also one that has like a Super Nintendo D-pad and then like more Super Nintendo, or like, I guess it's more like Fam Super Famicom colors over here, the buttons. And then there's also, uh, I think it's like an all black controller. I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember, but anyway, I'll leave links for it in the description. You can choose whichever one you want, whichever one you want. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend this controller. It's definitely one of my uh, favorite third-party controllers, and I will be using it a lot. Um, in fact, since it has even the rumble is really nice on it. I love this rumble. It's very very nice. I think I probably even like it more than the HD rumble to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that stuff is kind of cool, but. Boy, I love this really powerful rumble. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's definitely better than the other, like the the smaller 8-bit controller that I have where it doesn't have these big handles on it. Yeah, that definitely has a smaller um, rumble remote motor inside. And yeah, this one feels a lot nicer than that. And so yeah. Oh, and then also the battery life is also has been pretty good. You know, I've been playing it for uh, quite a while now, um, using this controller for quite a while at least for a few hours, and it still says that it's uh, fully charged. So, um, so yeah, it seems like it has a pretty good battery life, and also seems like that having it <laughs> been left out in the uh, in the sun and the cold for a few days um, didn't appear to not have really uh, affected the battery life very much. So, yeah, that was an unattended test again, but, um, yeah, it seemed to <laughs> be working pretty good even just, just, <laughs> uh, despite that. So... Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll uh, talk to you later. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want me to try anything else out. And uh, yeah, i yeah happy I got this controller. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, oh, and then also, I already mentioned this before, but yeah, these paddles I could do without. I wouldn't mind if they just uh, removed those, yeah. Because yeah, I kept on pushing those by accident. So. Um, but yeah, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like uncomfortable to have them there. So yeah, I don't mind them being there. I mean, when I think about it, they're kind of uncomfortable just because I'm not used to them. But yeah, I don't know. I guess that's another complaint kind of that I have about this control. I just don't like those paddles. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm not used to them again. But um, yeah, that's something I could do without. If I had a choice, I would probably choose the 
controller that didn't have those. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like it could be useful. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, and our another thing I forgot to mention is that this controller also supposedly has the turbo function, which um, I didn't try, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Turbo is pretty self-explanatory. It just pushes a button really quick. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I think this video is already long enough. But yeah, if you really want me to test that, let me know, and I'll try to make another video testing the Turbo. Um, whoops, I connected another controller. But yeah, anyway, I think that'll do it for now. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.